Hello again, and welcome to another edition of Sing a New Song with Pamela L. Moore. I'm so excited that you uh, decided to join us again um, this week, and we have something a little bit different today. Um, it's mainly been just me talking to you, but today I wanted to bring a different perspective. Um, there are many songwriters, different styles, and different um, types of processes that people go through as they write their songs. So I thought it would be great to bring in uh, someone else to give you a different perspective. Last time we talked about what a song really is for the purpose of the talk, topic we're speaking of. Uh, we talked about it being a combination of sounds and emotions uh, and words put to a melody that display uh, your posture towards God, how you feel about God, your thankfulness towards Him. I also want to bring in the point about it's also an opportunity for God to display His heart through you in song. So today I want to bring on two people that are very special to me. I have a special connection with them. Um, I'm, I hope you've heard of them. If you haven't, you will know them after today. They are the dynamic duo known as the Agape Music Group, John and Sequoia Howard. Welcome, John and Sequoia. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is exciting. I'm very excited. Wow. So we want to just let uh, my viewers know a little bit about who you are, and you can just tell them uh, what you're doing right now, what you have going on, and then we'll get into a little bit more about your process. Okay. Well, we are John and Sequoia Howard. We are the Agape Music Group. Um, we are husband and wife. We are. I am the daughter of this wonderful woman here, mm -hmm. um, and we um, we do music that um, that we believe is straight from the heart of God, that displays the heart of God. Um, I mean, agape is in our name, which means, you know, the God kind of love, that unconditional love. So, um, yeah, some of it you, you can bop to, some of it just chill to. Uh, some of it uh, creates some very introspective thought, um, but it is all God-centered, God-focused, biblically sound. That's who we are. Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> I mean, she pretty much covered it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I just want my viewers to know that there are some people who will disagree with me, but I am their number one fan. <laughs> just let it be known. <laughs> All right. So what I want to talk about, John and Sequoia, you do um, uh, an, an awesome job of collaborating together to bring your songs to life. Tell me a, bit, a little bit about your process for doing that. Well, our process is, um, it, it varies from time to time. Um, yeah. uh, most times, though, it's uh, Sequoia, you know, recording a voice memo. And she has a melody and, uh, or a, 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 she's beatboxing on the... On the um, he won't put me on, on the, the track with my beatboxing. <laughs> a little salty about it. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Um, but, and so she'll send me a voice memo of something that came to her throughout the day. Um, and, you know, I'll just add to it. Um, she'll send me like a skeleton of it and I'll just add to it um, and, and kind of what I feel, what I hear in the song. And then a lot of times she'll come in as well and she'll add and say, oh no, go, go to this progression, the chord progression, or, you know, what about this rhythm type thing. And so, is that, and then, some, and then sometimes it's me just creating, me sitting down and creating uh, something, and she comes and sits in the room, and she's like, you know, instantly inspired by it, and she'll just start start writing. But um, a lot of times our songs actually start through our devotional time, um, through a scripture we may have read, and we have a conversation about it, talk about how it has impacted us, um, in the past or even presently. Um, and then sometimes we'll just write the song directly from scripture. That's a little free tip for you. Like, there's a lot, a lot. of lyrics Absolutely. right there yeah. in the Bible. Um, like our song, Psalms 23, Chase Me Down, literally exactly. came directly from scripture. Mm -hmm. um, but then, like, our most recent song, Flow Like Water, uh, is based off of Amos chapter 5, verses, 20, verses 23 through 24. Um, and that 
particular one is talking about there was a time period in Israel where there was a lot of injustice going on, a lot of oppression going on, but everybody was still bringing their sacrifices to God and making songs and acting like everything was still okay, having their festivals. And he came in, spoke through Amos, and God was like, yeah, I'm tired of all that, tired of all those festivals, but let justice and righteousness flow like streams of water. And we took that particular verse of scripture and uh, applied it to what we're seeing happen today in the um, in the social and racial injustices that are taking place. That's good. That's good. A couple of points I wanted to um, just talk about. You talked about a lot of times it just comes from your devotion. Mm-hmm. Um, not necessarily that you're sitting down to write a song, yeah. but because of something you may have read or something mm-hmm. as a point of your discussion comes that melody. Or you may not even get the melody right there. You might just get some words and they spark your interest and you go from there. Um, One of the things, too, that you said is that the scripture that you read in Amos was current. Mm-hmm. And that's what the word of God is. Yes. It is a living, yes. it is a yes. living document yes. that does not just apply to our past, it applies yes. to our present. Yep. And um we were talking today, my husband and I were talking today about in Proverbs that in all of your getting, get understanding. Yeah. And understanding leads to wisdom. Mm-hmm. And so we learning to apply those things that yeah. we gain the knowledge in. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yes. One thing I wanted to point out too um, is sometimes we will have had our devotion maybe in the room or in the kitchen or what have you. Mm-hmm. And... Um, we will have moved on with the rest of the day and he may go in and start playing a particular chord progression. Chord progressions like incite different thoughts Mm -hmm. and memories and emotions. Um, So sometimes that'll quickly recall back a a scripture, you know, that that we had talked about, you know, maybe several weeks ago or what have you. Um, So yeah, it just it just flows that way. God is good. And the word flow. I want to talk about that for just a minute mm-hmm. because sometimes we feel like we have to write the whole song right then and there. Mm. Yeah. Doesn't happen like that. So it's really okay if you get a line. Sometimes yeah. it's just a word. It starts with a word. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I know I do. I'll repeat that one word over and over and over. And before you know it, there's a phrase. And then that phrase turns into a verse or a chorus or something. And so it's okay if the whole song doesn't come at the, at the same time. Yeah. Uh, sometimes songs come over a period of time. Mm-hmm. And it's okay, too, yeah. if you find that you need to collaborate. Yeah. And it's okay if you record the song and then you listen back and you hear a word or a phrase yeah. that if you just switch it just a little bit might become more impactful, more effective. Um, I know that happens for us a ton of times. Um, One of the things that we actually do a lot is sometimes we'll just go in and John will hit record and I'll I'll just start singing whatever comes out. There have been times that we actually kept you know, whatever comes out, like our song Closer to You. The end of Closer to You after the after the second verse and after the last chorus was we didn't know what we were doing for a bridge or outro or whatever and you just hit record and we just, just, just went it with it um, yeah. that is really that is really good John Sequoia this is very insightful and I hope that you're gaining some insight about writing songs now you all have sort of a package deal mm-hmm. you're producing and you know, you have some of the musical skills and things of that nature. What about, what can you say to some of our viewers who may not have that access to people who may have the musician right there at their disposal or whatever when they're hearing the song? Um, I, I would say, find you some friends. Yeah. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Um, and, yeah. not, and not just to get something from them. I think that's one of, that's one of the most incredible things about this journey that we're on right now is um, this my, my husband has always been a tremendous giver so have I um, but him on like a completely different level like he's done projects for people upon projects for little to nothing that didn't ask for much or what have you but when it came time for him to ask for help for certain things those people like dropped everything. It was like, boom, you got it, whatever it is, because he 
he came to them with, hey, what can I do for you? As opposed to what, you know, take, 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 you know. So um, start formulating those relationships. There are so many groups, uh, musician and production groups out there on Facebook, Instagram, all of that. So start getting in some of those, start getting in some of those circles. And then, of course, don't dismiss the power of prayer um, because divine connections are happening all the time every day you know so ask God to show you who are those people I need to network with um that's something that we did at the very beginning of this was just like Lord who do you want to be a part of this journey with us like direct us to those people and those people that would be there to not make it good and and you know and not do the best thing for it then shut it down and those people that we need to have around us bust the door wide open it's, I, I would say, too, that um, it's it's a journey. Mm-hmm. It's a journey just being a creative. And, um, and, you know, what you may see us at now, mm-hmm. it took us a while to get to this point. And I'm, and I'm saying to where mm-hmm. there was stuff stirring in us years ago. Right. And we were, it was like we were waiting for the exact moment. And the Holy Spirit was setting us up, you know, to get to the place where we were waiting. We were diligent in our writings and mm-hmm. and, and and some stuff had to happen here. And, and yeah, absolutely, we had to had to some some, some things in our heart um, as far as you know, just the willingness to do it, the drive to do it, the uh, the confidence to yeah. do it, um, and and not you know just building us up in our craft and honing our skills and those types of things. And so all that to say, you know, even in those moments where you may feel like you don't have anybody to do Mm -hmm. it or to, to help your dream come to pass, that passion, that drive, that desire, hold on to it because it may not be that moment, Mm -hmm. but eventually if God and when God gives you that, and if he, and and he when if he gave it to you, then it will come to pass. Those musicians will come, the producers and the uh, the uh, visual artists and all of those things will come together. You'll see it start to come together. So don't lose hope. And that's you know? that's what's so dope about God's sovereignty. Uh, we don't we don't talk about his sovereignty a lot, but his sovereignty says that in all things that happens, he's he's good and he knows exactly what's best. Um, and and in in viewing this creative process as a journey, understanding that okay, right now may not be the actual time to yeah. you know to put out, but this is a wonderful time for me to hone those skills for me to it's the incubation process right Mm -hmm. is the right time for me to formulate those relationships this is the time for me to identify my identity in him you know so that that confidence is there so that when i step into the studio with whoever you know i i can i can hold my own because i know who i am whose i am and what's here in me so yeah. yeah And I want to also let it be known that not every song is for the world. Facts. Yeah. Some Facts. songs are just for you. Yeah. Facts. And although you may say, well, what significance is there of me writing a song just for me? You'd be surprised. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because those words will come back to you. And you, you know you, have, you know the, the phrase of when you point your finger, there's one pointing right back at you. Those songs minister to you first, yeah. oftentimes. Yeah. yeah, and another perspective of that too is I, I view it. I'm a former athlete, you know, so um, and still a personal trainer. So I I view a lot of things in those terms. But you see a professional athlete out on the court or what have you. You see the end result of what took right. place. We don't see all their workouts, right. i.e., them writing the songs that everybody didn't hear. Mm-hmm. You don't see you know, the proper things they put in their body as far as nutrition-wise, i.e., you know, collaborating and networking with those people and and sitting sitting in it. And, yeah, like, you don't don't see all those things. We see the end result. So there's still, that's all still a part of the process. Um, I know one of the things that we did before we actually started releasing music um, last year, 2019, we, we made it a point to at least a couple of times a month do something musically. 
Like, and, and most of that stuff, nobody probably would, would ever hear. <laughs> like, no. that, that'll just be in our catalog, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was a part of the process so that when it came to this time to actually releasing and collaborating with other really amazing um, artists, that we were we were ready for that because we were honing those skills. John was honing his production skills and yeah. learning a whole new language and mixing and mastering. Right. And, you know, so so yeah, it's all it's all a part of it. It's yeah. all necessary. It's an art. It's all necessary, and your songs are necessary. Yes. And I think that's one of the main points of the reason I started this blog is because don't think that anything that God gives you is insignificant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's needed somewhere in the earth. So if you sow it, the earth is going to receive what it needs. Yeah. Just like we, our body take in the, the nutrients that it needs. Mm-hmm. It just discards what it doesn't need mm-hmm. and it takes in what it does need. So that's the way I feel about the songs that we literally sow into the earth because they actually have the power and the authority yeah. to speak to things in the earth. Just like I think about your song, uh, Flow Like Water. I believe that God did give that strategically at this time. Right. And it spoke to the very situation that we're dealing with right now. And I believe that it has a power and authority to change the atmosphere of some things to the hearers of of that. You know, and so um, our songs really do matter. And God's heart is is for us to hear him yeah. and to release it into the earth. Absolutely. So there is significance, guys, in the songs that mm-hmm. we sing. Don't take it lightly at all. Yeah. So thank you, Sequoia, Sequoia and John, for joining me on Sing a New Song with Absolutely. Pamela L. Moore. I totally enjoyed it. And I know that my viewers have enjoyed hearing from you. And I want you to know that moving forward, you can write those songs. You can hear what God is speaking from his heart to yours to sow into the earth. So I hope you'll join us next time. Thank you for joining us.